Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this pretty floral card. It's six inches square. I've used the All Things Fabulous stamp set together with some paper from the Peony Garden 12 inch designer series paper pack. And it's a Z fold card. Inside there's a large panel where you can write your message and this is completely hidden by the panel on the front of the card. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, take a screenshot so you can refer to it later. This is the All Things Fabulous stamp set and I'll be using all of the images today. Now it's a two-step stamp set and I'll explain what that means in a minute. The stamp set is photopolymer and the stamps come on an acetate sheet as normal. But also on the acetate sheet you get a key that helps you put these flowers together. If you look at the front of the stamp case, it shows you the flowers and how they're made up. And most of them come in sets of three. There are a couple that are just two. So those three images make up one flower. The two step just means that you use more than one stamp to build your final image. That could be two stamps or three stamps or more. The key on the acetate sheet is against each of the images. So for these first three flowers, the key is 1A, 1B and 1C. And there's also a little arrow against each image showing you the position you need to stamp it in. This especially helps when trying to line up one image on top of another. But to be fair, this stamp set is quite simple to use. You just need a little practice. The key for this second flower type is 2A, 2B and 2C. And it's also got the little arrows so you know how to hold your stamp in which direction. Then the smaller flower is 3A, 3B and 3C. And again, it shows you the position to hold the, each image when you stamp it. On this little flower, you want to make sure that you've got the little sticky out bit facing downwards and the other one to, towards the left. Okay, and if you do that for each stamp, it will line up. And these stamps do not have to line up perfectly. Today I'm going to go through each image and show you how it should be stamped or how I stamp it. It's not necessarily the right way. You can either start with your larger image and use your lightest ink and then move towards your smallest image which will be your darkest ink. Or you can go the other way, starting with your darkest ink and your smallest image and moving to your larger image and your lightest ink. So you can see the stamping clearly, I'm going to change colours and I'm using Real Red and Mossy Meadow inks. For this stamp set I like to work from the smaller stamp to the larger stamp. So I'm starting with my darkest colour and I'm going to stamp my first image. Then I'm going to take the middle stamp and this time I'll stamp off once. Then I'm going to line up the stamp on top of my stamped image and it's easy to see the placement required for this one. You can either refer to the acetate sheet or just go for it, which is what I do. Now the third stamp needs to be stamped off twice to get an even lighter tone. I'm just using one shade of ink this time. You could use three different shades of red ink if you prefer and get a similar effect. Now for the second flower and again I'm starting with the smallest stamp and I'm using full strength ink. Then I'm going to do the medium size stamp and I'm going to stamp off once 
And again, it's really simple to line this up. To line up the third stamp in the set, so the largest one, you need to ensure that that petal with the straight edge is positioned by the first two spiky bits on the right hand side. So they will go on the side edges of that petal. So I'm going to stamp off twice again and then I'm going to move my stamp so that square edge petal is positioned correctly and there you go. When you stamp the smallest image on the small flower you want to make sure that there's one spiky bit going downwards and one towards the left and that's full strength ink. Now the middle stamp you stamp off once and again it's got a sort of sticky outy bit going downwards so just line that up. Now the third stamp is a little more tricky. If I show you the stamp case, you can see there's one small funny little petal and that just needs to be pointing top left. So stamp off twice and then it will line up when you stamp it as long as that petal is top left. The other two images of flowers are like a side view if you like. Again the smallest stamp is full strength ink and then there's just one other for the petals. So you stamp it off once, line up the image from the right hand side in the centre, there's a little sort of divot, and then stamp it. Now the third image in the set is a stem. Now obviously you can more or less stamp this stem in any position so if you were die cutting these flowers I would die cut at this point which would also die cut a stem and then you could stamp the stem on afterwards and I'll show you how I do that later. However if you're just stamping and you're not going to die cut then you can stamp the stem now. Now there's a different size one Again, the first image is full strength ink and then the second one is stamped off once. And I'm just lining it up at the bottom and stamping. And again, for this one, if you were going to die cut, I'd die cut now before stamping the stems. If you're just stamping on a panel, then you can stamp the stem now. There are also two sprays of flowers, one larger than the other. Now again, if you're die cutting these, die cut them before you stamp the stems. Otherwise you can go ahead and stamp the little stems. Oops, I didn't line that one up very well at all, but never mind. And then the last of the flowers is the little spray. So again, full strength ink and then die cut and stamp the stems or if you're just stamping on a panel or something then you stamp the stems now and that one was better. And finally there's three different types of leaves in this set. I've shown you how I stamp each of these images and now I'll show you how many of each you need to stamp if you want to recreate today's card. You will need to stamp three of these first flowers and just to remind you that they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Only one of these flowers and that's the top left was stamped perfectly. The other two are not at all but I'll still use them. They're still absolutely fine. You will need to stamp six of the smaller flowers then you'll need one of the other large flower, five of the large sprays and six of the small sprays. Then you'll need three of the small side view flowers and three of the larger side view flowers. For the leaves you need five of this type, one of the sort of wider ones and then four of the little ones. All the images will be die cut using the coordinating fabulous floral dies. Now all of these dies are outline dies and you have a die for each image. You also have this beautiful border panel. 
Now some of the dies you have two of which helps and those are the little sprays and the larger sprays and the little and larger side view flowers as well. Everything else just has one die. There are quite a few stems to stamp but really this doesn't take any time at all to do. Again, don't worry about being too precise. This is the Peaceful Moment stamp set and I'm going to use the Happy Birthday sentiment and I'm going to stamp this in Mossy Meadow. I'm going to die cut this sentiment using one of the Celebration Labels dies and this is the smallest one and you want to centre that sentiment when you die cut it. I've cut two real red mats and for this I used one size down from the largest die. And then I've also die cut two Whisper White mats and for this one I used two sizes down from the largest. Now on one of these I've also run it through with the Parisian Flourish 3D embossing folder. And when I did I made sure that I centred the die cut within the pattern on the folder. I'm going to use two pieces of real red cardstock to create my card base. One piece measures six inches by six inches, the other one measures six and a half inches by six inches. Now, if you've got any real red 12 inch by 12 inch card, you can use that, just cut it in half and that will create your card base. But if you haven't, you can cut these panels from your normal standard size card. I'm going to be scoring the wider section, which is the six and a half inches. But if you're using 12 inch by six inch, you'll do the same. You'll score at three inches and at six inches. So your 12 inch card would look like so. Before joining the two pieces together, I just want to make a slant cut on each end of the half inch tab that I created. Then I can fold and burnish on that score line. To join them together, I just add glue to the half inch tab and place the other section on top of it. To create the Z fold, you just need to fold on that three inch score line and burnish with a bone folder. For the inside of the card, I have a Whisper White mat, and then I have some of our Heartwarming Hugs designer series paper, and this is actually Christmas paper. And when you place this, this will hide that join between the two panels on your card base. Then I have two additional Whisper White mats and some more of the same designer series paper for the front of the card. I'll also be layering up the Celebration Labels die cuts that I made earlier, adding dimensionals onto the sentiment panel and adding that too.
I'm going to add the celebration labels panels to the inside first of all and I'm going to use my grid paper to help me. So I've centered my panel on the grid paper. So I've got um, the darker lines running through the center. Then I can add my glue to my labels and use those lines to center my panel. Conveniently, the labels have little notches at the halfway point, so it's quite easy to do this. And when you close your card, that fold should run through the centre of the labels panel. The labels panel for the front of the card just needs to be lined up with the one underneath it. Now you're only going to add glue to the left hand side of this label. So I'm going to draw a pencil line and mark it just in case I get it wrong. And then I can add my glue. So you're adding it less than halfway across. And then I can line up the right hand side with the labels underneath and just press it into position.
And that's it. That's my card complete. I love how this one's turned out. Now, of course, you can stand it up however you want. It's a bit difficult to show you with the camera, but you'll see in the photographs. And here's another look at my original card. This one looks a little insipid now, next to the vibrancy of the new one. The blue I used for this one was balmy blue, and the paper colour was grey granite. I definitely prefer the red card now, but which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments, I'd be really interested to know. Thank you for joining me today, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.